Hi lovelies and welcome back to Pamela's Tarot Tales with Pamela Tice. I have been tagged to do a response video to the original um, Maha's Treasure Box and the tag is hashtag tarot 11 and I was tagged by the awesome Maria Lent from Sacred Heart Tarot so this one's for you and I'm so glad that you tagged me because um, I've answered some of these questions with the hashtag 31 days of tarot but I'm excited to do this one because it's all together and to think about it a little bit differently and have a more in-depth answer this is a cool tag because it's broken down the year into the number 11 and I've started diving into a bit of numerology with tarot here lately with my Marseille studies so I think that's pretty cool and also my um, two cards for the year are strength and justice and so I'm kind of intrigued on how that number 11 um, pops up and how that interplay changes with Rider Waite Smith and Marseille especially because I've been playing with both here lately so we'll get to it when and how did I first discover tarot you know that's a good question uh, I think I've kind of always been somewhat aware of it but it's never come into my repertoire until fairly recently, um, within the last two, three, four years. Um, I think maybe a couple of friends or acquaintances had played around with it. My best friend, who um, you know, I found out later, she was actually, had been familiar with it and had cards, and, and that just never came up between us until much later, but I was kind of intrigued by that. I was like, oh, really? Um, so. I had been exploring my psychic abilities. I'm very intuitive. Um, develop, I took some classes in developing my clairs, um, the five clairs, the clair audient, the clair um, sentient, the clair olfactory, and the clair, oh shoot, of course I draw a blank because I'm on film, but um, the, the clair cognizant and Anyway, the one that's the anyway, you get the idea. So I had taken some courses in developing that. I had been pursuing Reiki at the time. Um, I had also started to explore a little bit of animal communication. So all of these things kind of came into play at the same time. And tarot seemed like such a great logical way to explore that, but also do it in a way that is tangible, uh, meaning having something to look at, having cards, having something that someone else can look at. Because with animal communication, it's done through telepathy, so there's not anything to look at. There's not anything to, um, other than what I see, or using my clairs to, to feel what the animal feels, to see what the animal sees, hear, and, you know, perceive and know, and all of that stuff. Um, so I wanted something a little bit more tangible, and that seemed like a great way for me to explore on my own without having to work with others necessarily but could lend itself to opening up and working with others I took so in the courses that I were taking at the time um, there was a woman called uh, named Marianne Holston who now lives in central South Florida South Florida and she at the time was living in Ohio and was doing these online Skype courses with us. We were in, I was in South Carolina, and another friend of mine was hosting. So we all got together, and um, one of the courses was Intro to Tarot. And I was like, that sounds cool. I think I'll do that. See what happens. And I didn't have any cards. I actually borrowed the host's um, daughter's oracle cards, which ended up being um, this Power Animals Oracle deck by. Um, Stephen Farmer, uh, which worked really well because I was so interested in animal stuff. And the woman that Marianne Holston, who kind of did an intro course with us, she basically paired us up and we were to read cards for, you know, pull one card and work with the other person. And she was like, okay, we're going to throw away the little white book. You're going to read intuitively. And I was like, well, okay, well, I've never tried that. Sure. I'm very intuitive. I'm very, um, very, very sensitive. 
and so it made sense to me. So I got a lot out of one card, one oracle card, um, even though we were doing tarot, and everyone else had tarot cards. So that was encouraging, and after that was my 35th birthday, and I went to Asheville, North Carolina, went to an amazing, amazing shop there. I can't remember the name of it, but it's not far from an amazing tea shop. <laughs> um, I'll try to find the names of them. But I went and I just wanted to go for my birthday and I wanted to treat myself to a couple of decks and see, you know, see what I was drawn to. I was really looking for an animal deck and I didn't find one that I loved. I did find this deck, um, which I struggle with, but it's the... Tarot of the Animal Lords. I have since chopped the borders off to try to connect better with it because it was a low scare bio deck that has all the um, names in other languages and, and everything around the border. So I have since cut all that off and I've just written a little bit across the bottom. Um, this is a deck that I'd really like to come back to and play with a little bit more. Um, but some of the imagery is like this one, really awkward super super awkward I don't like how they you know the artist has you know um, anthropomorphized these these animals um, but some of them work really well for me and I like them so I, I'm not ready to get rid of this deck it is something I want to come back to but this is one of my first decks and I bought I'll show a few more of those in case They are Rider Waite Smith. If I don't drop them all over the floor, even if I do drop them all over the floor, they're Rider Waite Smith still. Um, but I like the sim symbology in it. Um, it seemed like a good place to start, but the book was useless. Um, so I, you know, I just didn't feel like I had anybody to read for, anybody to play with, and I wasn't connecting well enough with the imagery to explore it on my own at the time and I didn't have any friends that were really really into it so that has since changed and then I also got at the same time this uh, Joy to Vive Tarot um, by Paulina Cassidy I have the box somewhere but I've got it in a bag and this, this deck I really enjoy, and I want to come back to it too. I've kind of set it aside because I've got so many new decks. and um, But it reads incredibly well, intuitively. The Little White Book is decent for a Little White Book. Um, I like the stories that she puts with it and the character information. So this was a good place, I think, for me to start because it was soft. It wasn't overwhelming. Um, there's a lot to look at. I could pull out intuitively because I'm a predominantly an intuitive reader um, that's just what I was working on at the time so it made sense and I still that's still how I read so anyway um, so that's how I first discovered tarot I I kind of was playing with a little here and there but didn't really dive into it until the past like year and a half or so and that's when I've really more obsessed with it and I sought out groups on Facebook to help build a community and help me learn and help me grow um, and I think this answers one of the other questions so I'll just go ahead and answer it is how long have you been working with tarot so that's the second question um, my birthday is Tuesday coming up the 13th and I'll be 30 uh, 38 so I would say three years um, actively Every, you know, in um, for a good two, two and a half, but really three years. So not long in the scheme of things. I know people that have done it for much, much longer. Um, but it's not about time and how long you, you study. It's about your passion for it. It's about, you know, you're always going to learn from it if you choose to do so. And that's how I see um, this as a lifelong learning adventure. Um, that helps me to share with others. Do you consider yourself a deck collector? Um, 
Uh, let's see. The answer is yes and no. So I'm an artist and that's what I was trained in. I have my master's in fine arts and ceramics and I'm an object maker. So, and as an artist who also draws and paints and um, is very creative in general, I love the artwork. So I could see myself becoming a collector. As of right now, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a collector, but I don't want to be one of those, I don't want to be a collector for collection's sake. Um, I want to have a tool chest of things that I respond to that will um, facilitate and deliver service-based messages. So if that means that I pare it down to one deck, great. If I have, you know, a hundred decks, great. It's not about the collection for collection's sake. It's about, like I said, just having those resources available. And they do respond differently. I do read them differently because um, I, because of, I'm an artist, and so I've been trained to interpret images. So different images will evoke different things, and that will depend on the context of the question. And I'm okay with that. I am. I'm okay with that. I just don't want to have a massive collection that sits there and doesn't get used. And there's nothing wrong with that. More power to those people that have those. That's awesome. I'm glad you're supporting artists and supporting creators. I think that's fabulous. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, do you cleanse your decks? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes and no. Um, predominantly yes. When I first get a new deck, I very much cleanse it. I'm hypersensitive to the energies that come with the deck, come from the, the printing, the process, the creator, the intentions behind it. Um, and I feel like I need to clear some of that and charge it. And so, yes, I do do um, cleansing with that process. And it's also a way for me to connect to the deck and put my energy into it so that I build a partnership with this um, this energy and this so that it'll speak to me in a way that resonates in a, in a profound way. So that is... That to me is an important part of my process. Sometimes I cleanse them if I feel like they're um, muddy or, uh, you know, I put crystals with them every once in a while. Sometimes I put them in the moonlight, but not, it's not like a every month thing. It's not something that I actively practice. I do use sage to cleanse them, I have incense around. Um, so, yeah, but especially when I first get a new deck, that is so, so, so important part of my process. Okay, and what role does tarot play in your life? That's a good question. Um, to me, tarot is, is a wonderful tool um, that helps me connect Sorry, that was my cat getting down. Um, to, it helps me connect with others, helps me um, guide and myself as well as uh, deliver a message of service for others. I find that my interests have been with personal growth and development, and that has been through my adventures in teaching arts. It has been my, um, it just seems like, Part of my purpose and part of my um, interest in tarot is, is it's another way to facilitate personal growth and development, not just for myself, but for others. And that is really important to me. Um, so it's, a, it's becoming even more and more important um, of a role for me. It helps me, Open me, opens me up and helps me see things in a different way or connect to energies that I wasn't aware of or um, connect to other people that, that, you know, to build community and build friendships. And that has been an amazing thing. It's actually how I met um, online Maria Lent from Sacred Heart Tarot, who is the one that tagged me for this. So, yeah. Okay, so do, do I use any system 
of correspondences with tarot? Um, not yet. <laughs> I do some numerology because I, a little bit, um, association with numbers because I've been working through Tom Benjamin's awesome book, Tarot on Earth, and working with Learning Marseille and Pip Style decks. And um, so I guess I apply a little bit of numerology and I think that's fascinating. I'm currently also studying, uh, that opened up the door for Vedic numerology and that as a personality traits and and I'm fascinated by that, so I'm curious how that ties into tarot and the associations with the numbers with the tarot. Um, I don't, you know, I'm interested in a few other things, but I right now am just diving into tarot and I am so excited about that. So, oh, I do, yes, I do associate when I use an a deck that has animals in it. So the Green Witch Tarot has animals as well as people in it and Animal Totems Tarot um, ha is all animals. And so when I use a deck that has animals or I see animals or even plants but not not as much plants but more animals, um, I really look at the meaning of that animal, the message delivered by that animal. Um, and that is a totem. And I use um, this is one of the books I use. I have a few. This is my pocket guide, so I take it with me most places. So when I see animals, um, this is something I do in my own life. And I look at the meaning and the messages that, and how that pertains to um, circumstances. So this is a great little book if you're looking for a pocket guide. He's got a bigger one that has, it's basically the same information. Um, so... That is Spirit Animals by Dr. Stephen Farmer, who also did the Power Animal Oracle cards. So, okay, moving on. What is the one? Oh, back on the correspondences, I, you know, I see a lot of people using astrology, and it makes my heart yearn for that, but I, I'm just not there yet. So I think that's something to play in at some point. Um, I'm interested in the Tree of Life and Kabbalah and how that plays into the tarot. I kind of started diving into that, but it's too much right now. So I've set that aside. Um, a lot of interest, but nothing um, particular. I have started using a pendulum with tarot to, you know, decide decks and how what energy I need to focus focus on if in a spread. Um, if I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where to start, and I can use that to emphasize where to start um, because as an Aquarian sometimes it's hard for me um, to get started so what is the one deck that you feel most comfortable with no matter what the situation uh, um, that's a great question and I don't know that I have the answer to that um, I'm looking at my decks that's why I'm looking up so I would say, huh. yeah, that's a good question. Um, I find that, that and I talk about this deck with every video, and <laughs> it may be <laughs> just one of those decks that I just absolutely adore and I will always adore. Um, at least I hope so. It's La Corte de Taroki. I don't know where to top that. Here we go. And this deck, it's so succinct. It answers everything. Um, I think it would be great for any, 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 any type of reading. Um, I haven't used it for others yet just because it's, it's special and I love it. And um, that doesn't mean that I don't want to share it. It just means I want more time with it before I do. But I do think it would read incredibly well for others. Don't think I would have a problem with it. But this is the deck. Oh. So amazing. And you know, it's surprising because this deck, um, I'm not usually drawn to more traditional or historic. And this, I don't think it's either one of those, but just this style of artwork. But I do find it really beautiful. I find it really soothing. Um, I find it truthful and on point and easy and succinct, easy to read. I love the coloration of this deck. I cannot say enough good things about this deck. Um, I've actually been having dreams that I, 
<laughs> I lost cards in this deck and they got damaged and destroyed and I need to reconcile that because <laughs> um, because they're nightmares and I like, dove into deep clear waters um, from like 100 feet to save <laughs> like four cards <laughs> last night um, but this deck I think just reads so beautifully it reads for everything every situation and I'm so grateful to be able to have it in my life. Um, and so I'd say that's the one deck that, that if I read that question as you feel most comfortable with, I'd say probably that one. Even though it's a newer deck, I've only had it since November, and it's, it's only February, but um, it just seems to be that way. It feels like it's an old friend that I've had forever. Um, even though I'm still seeing the cards and learning them new, they still feel um, so familiar. Okay. And apparently I'm very, very chatty today, so yay! <laughs> um, other Number eight. Other than doing readings, do you like tarot? Oh, do you, do you use tarot in any other way? Um, yeah, I do. I have done it with a little bit of meditation. Um, I've done a chakra um, meditation with it and to not only a reading but just meditating on that, working with the energies of it and then um, trying to play with the energies and changing it and growing and evolving. Um, other than that, not really, but I just watched the amazing Katie Flowers video for therapeutic tarot, and I'm so, so amazed and in awe of her with that series, especially. Um, and I want to start u pulling that in, start using it in that therapeutic way, and I'll try to link a couple of her videos where she does that. Um, so using it to... I mean, I guess they're technically still readings in some ways, but they're not. It's not. It's so brilliant the way she's cultivated that. And I think that would be incredibly useful to me, as well as to how I want to work with tarot with others. Um, so, yeah. Number nine. Do you read tarot for predicting the future? No. Um, and here's why. Uh, I believe that the future is changeable. There may be some things that are kind of anchor points um, that you have to go through, but even that is changeable in the way that how you interact with those energies, how you interact or how you how much trauma happens or how much healing happens or how much um, grief happens, how much um, anything. I think it's all changeable, and I don't think anything's set in stone. And I think that's a, an amazing gift that we have. Um, to be able to create our future, to, to really manifest and to look at how we want to proceed. So I might do some, you know, kind of, it's more about how to proceed here and what that looks like if you do these steps to get there, it looks good. So it won't be a prediction, it'll be more of um, an energy that can help you evolve and grow and change now so that and how that looks energetically in the future. So, and I, I found it really interesting that uh, Maria said, the future does not exist. And that's a pretty powerful statement. And I, I don't know that it, if I agree with that or not, but I think it's an interesting perspective to look at and to think about. And, um, and it's pretty bold, so kudos. Get up balls, my friend, and I like it. All right, number 10. If you could be any card in tarot at this point in your life, which card would you be? Ah, that's a great question. Um, and today, <laughs> this answer would probably change tomorrow, but right now I'm going to say the sun card. And I've had um, some things come up in my meditations that have directed me towards understanding joy and and exuding joy and um, working with body language of, of how we interact with people and and how we can embody the the energy of the Sun 
to to be to be that joyful that that persistence that um but showing up every day and it's it's that strength and that power and it harnesses its energy um and i would i want to bring that in and the the spirituality that i am currently involved with and studying the practices that and the teachings that i'm reading about the um the connection is to the lineage of the the person that I study with is the sun. And I want to pull that in and embrace it in a bigger way than we can even imagine, that I can even imagine. Um, so I'm excited to explore that. And I'm pulling this card up in particular because this sun is existing no matter what's happening with these these characters down here. But it's lighting everything up. And so to be a beacon, no matter what, to be that joy, that light, that that healing. The sun is very, very healing. It's It charges our system. We re relate it to our third chakra, our solar plexus chakra, and um, even using that image, the sun, as image in that, that center, that chakra center, and embracing that seat of power, um, and not in an egoic way, but in, in, in a self-aligned truth way. And sharing that with others and lighting the way no matter what the circumstances are. I think that's a pretty powerful thing to to hold and to make space for and to strive for. Um, you know, and I've noticed that when I exude that warmth, that joy, that happy aspect, and I, I go into the grocery store with a smile on my face, and I say hi to someone, it changes their energy. It changes um, how I respond and react to them. And because I've had so much pain, physical pain in my life um, through, health, through a health condition, that has been such a struggle to function, much less hold positivity, hold joy, hold um, a smile on the face. And, and interacting with people is not always so warm and loving and gentle because I don't, everything is in that space. When you're in the space of pain, it is, everything is irritating. Everything makes it worse. Everything um, is really hard to function. And I don't want to hold that pattern anymore. I want to release that and embrace the sun. So, all right. Well, that went deep. So that was fun. Um, let's see. Okay. All right, guys, we're at number 11. Which one card in tarot has been most difficult for you to connect with and how have you finally become more comfortable with it? That's a great question. Um, I don't know that I have an answer for that right now. I would say probably the um, Five of Swords or the Seven of Swords, somewhere along in there. Um, because I just don't operate on that. That It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, what does make more sense is looking at it from a Marseille-style reading where you're incorporating the element and the and the, um, the numerology, and then, and then that makes sense, and it has a whole different meaning than the Rider Waite Smith. And so that's helped me reconcile how I interact with the Rider Waite Smith. And it has, excuse me, it has popped up a, in a couple of other um, client readings, and it's given me a new perspective on that those two cards. So I guess those two, I'm not really sure other than that. So. Um, I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee. This is a handmade mug I made many years ago. I hardly ever drink coffee, but that is mostly decaf. I know, don't shoot me, but my system doesn't do well with coffee. But sometimes you just got to have something. So, um, Okay, so I wanted to say this has been a really fun tag. Thanks for hanging with me. I know we're kind of getting long. And the rules to this are you have to tag someone else. So first I want to say again, thanks to Maha from Maha's Treasure Box for creating this tag. It's been a lot of fun. And I want to say thanks to Maria Lent from Sacred Heart Tarot who has tagged me to do this. 
And I want to tag actually two people. And, you know, I think that's fine. I think it's okay. So I w I'm really curious to see what Kasha from Tarot Map has to say in relationship to this tag. Um, I just enjoy her videos. So I want to see, I want to see more of them. So I'm going to tag you, Kasha. And the other one I want to tag is also new to, to, um, to YouTube. And so I want to give some love to those of us that aren't quite as well known on YouTube. And that's Nikki Moore, who is also, um, a fabulous admin at the Tarot Nerds Facebook group. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of love there. Nikki, I want to see what you have to say and let me know when you do it. All right. Thanks for joining me for this tag and bearing with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to doing more of these. Have a great day. This is Pamela Tice with Pamela's Tarot Tales.